Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information, MotoGP and Formula 1 2024. Marc Marquez has given himself a grade of 8 out of 10 for his performances so far at Grazzini Ducati as he braces for a battle with Ania Bastianini over third in the MotoGP World Championship. Marquez currently holds third in the standings, 56 points behind Francesco Bagnaia and 24 from Jorge Martin, by 11 points over Bastianini, whose factory Ducati seat the Spaniard takes over in 2025. This first part of the season has been good. We can say not super good because we did some mistakes, Marquez said after charging from 13th on the grid to claim his fifth Grazzini podium from nine rounds on Sunday at the Saxenring. It can be a good target to try to be in the first three positions of the championship, because it will not be easy to keep Ania behind. He is a fast rider. Apart from that, the only thing that we need to work on in the second part of the season is to try to make a completely good, problem-free, weekend. We will keep fighting, keep learning from the top two guys inside Ducati, which is Martin and Banyaya. They are a bit faster than us. Marquez will also be seeking to eradicate his own mistakes when the MotoGP season restarts at Silverstone in early August, explaining his grade so far. For me, 8 out of 10. It was a good start of the season but a few mistakes. Especially Austin and the sprint race in Assen were the two big mistakes. The races were acceptable, but we were a bit inconsistent during the weekends. We saved things in Le Mans. We saved in different races, but we need to find a way to be a bit more constant during the weekend, straight away into Q2 and try to improve the Saturdays. The next best rider in the World Championship on a GP23 Ducati is VR46 Fabio Di Antonio, 74 points behind Marquez in 8th place. Brother and teammate Alex Marquez, who joined Mark on the Saxenring podium, is 10th in the World Championship. On the other hand, Miguel Oliveira finished the German MotoGP in 6th place following early battles with Francesco Bagnaia, Franco Morbidelli, and Alex Marquez. The trackhouse rider was the only rider able to pose a serious threat to Ducati before slowly losing touch as the race went on. Oliveira was overtaken by both Marc Marquez and Ania Bastianini at the final corner which dropped him to 7th before gaining a place when Jorge Martin crashed on the penultimate lap. It was a great weekend for sure, said Oliveira. We managed very competitive lap times, had very competitive finishes, both in the qualifying and the sprint. Today was the first real challenge, in the long race, that I faced during the weekend. We just didn't have enough for the Ducatis today, they were on a different pace and different grip levels. It's a shame I couldn't challenge for more because during the weekend I was riding good, quite smooth, managing the tires very well but I just didn't have enough today. Like in the sprint on Saturday, Oliveira's teammate Raul Fernandes dropped down the order after starting alongside the Portuguese rider on the front row. Although it wasn't as steep a drop as the sprint, Fernandes ultimately finished the race in 10th spot. Fernandez added, we had to analyze well what happened yesterday to understand the issue we had in the sprint because also for my mind, it was important to have a report before going into the race today. It was quite difficult to manage the sprint yesterday, so I wanted to know what to expect from the race today. The team did a good job and this morning we had some good information from yesterday. I understood the problem I had in the sprint, so I was super focused on performance in the race because I thought we could do well. But, finally in the race itself, although I did my maximum, I didn't have anything more, especially in the second part of the race. In the first 15 laps I was there fighting with leading group and Miguel but, from lap 15 on to the end, I was struggling with the tire. We tried to save it during the race in the way that I know, but it was difficult and so the end of the race was hard. I did my best and we are in the top 10, the weekend overall was quite okay. Fabio Cordero believes Yamaha are heading in the right direction despite a tough German MotoGP at Saxenring. The scene of his last MotoGP win in 2022, Cordero was 11th come the end of Sunday's 30-lap race. But despite missing out on a top 10 result, the 2021 world champion saw plenty of positives heading into the second part of the year. Cordero said, it was a tough GP, but today went much better than expected. We miss a lot in the beginning with new tires, but I finished with more or less the same distance to the winner as I did in yesterday's sprint, so I think that's pretty good. 
we know where we can improve. I think that the second part of the season will be better, and I think that we will improve. We made progress since the start of the year. We're working hard, and you can't tell by the results yet, but we are on our way, and hopefully you can see the steps we made soon. 19th on his return to MotoGP, Remy Gardner was impressive in his stand-in appearance for Alex Rins. After making changes from the sprint race, Gardner felt immediate improvements in warm-up, which carried into the Grand Prix. We made a setting change to improve my feeling with the bike, said Gardner. I felt a difference in warm-up, and I thought we could have a pretty good race. The pace until lap 10 was really good. I was fighting with Zarco and Brattle, trying to hunt down Mir, and I was in front of Brattle for 8-9 to nine laps, which was good. I didn't know how to manage the tire drop of the rear tire over the last 10 laps, but that's all down to experience. Still, if you compare my pace with the medium rear between yesterday's sprint and today's race, today's pace is much better. Hopefully I gave some good feedback and a different point of view, and hopefully Yamaha can take some positives from that. Jorge Martin couldn't explain his penultimate lap crash from the lead of Sunday's German MotoGP, saying he wanted to wait and analyze the data with a cool head, but some of his rivals were asked for their impressions. Repsol Honda's Luca Marini said he had only seen a TV replay of the incident, from the helicopter shot, which suggested. In my opinion, he braked quite late, after the white line which is the braking reference for turn 1, and Motomatters.com quotes Marini as saying. In my opinion, during the braking he understood that he was a little bit long, deep, because also he put his right leg out wide, but then come back. In my opinion, he was not sure to turn the bike inside, but maybe he said, okay I try. But maybe it's better to lose two tenths and go wide than destroy the championship, lead. It's a pity for him, but better for Peko. KTM's Jack Miller highlighted the complicated nature of the undulating turn 1 braking zone. You're trying to stop it, and then right at the most critical point, the track drops away, Miller explained. A couple of times you do roll the dice going in there, when you brake later, and think, oh, I've got it, and it starts getting close to that drop off and you know you're going to unload the front at that point. It happened a few times to me throughout the race, where you almost start standing it up, he added. You've got a choice, you either start standing it up or you commit to it. I don't feel like you ever fully break to your full potential there. There's always a little bit of margin, obviously with the hill right as you grab the brakes, and then it drops away, again, at the apex of the corner. I think they were riding on the limit, Aprilia's Maverick Vinales said of the Martin Francesco Bagnaia victory battle. The previous laps were, close to, 1 minute and 20 seconds, that's a pretty fast lap time at the end of the race. Turn 1 is really tricky. It happened to me in the morning, I stopped the bike better but when I touched the gas it was on the crest. You have to be so careful.